Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And now that I have the double width double weave blanket off the loom, it's time to start with the finishing. So the first thing I do is I trim all the loose ends from where I joined the uh, threads and uh, change colors. So it's a long process and uh, I am sure that I'm missing some here and there, but uh, eh, it's not such a bad job. So I'm sure to check both sides and there's a couple here that I'm not going to trim because they were my repair threads and I need to needle weave those in. There are a few mistakes. Uh, it looks like I missed some threads when I was uh, weaving their skips. They're usually on the bottom because I can't see the bottom when I am weaving and so they're pretty easy to miss. So the camera is a great way to find uh, problems in your weaving. For some reason the camera um, highlights or makes really apparent uh, what the naked eye can't see. So here you can see that there's obviously a problem with the threading. Uh, looks like maybe when I was threading the bottom layer, uh, I got off a couple threads um, or maybe or maybe I threaded on shaft seven when I should have threaded on shaft eight. I'm not sure what happened here, but uh, I will need to fix this. Um, because I don't want the twill pattern to be broken um, in this place. So that's a, that's a pretty big fix, but um, it's easy to do. It's just that you have to take the threads out uh, the entire length and then re-thread them in the proper uh, shed. So we'll go and take this over to the dining room table where I can lay it out and uh, find all the skips and uh, we can repair those. I'll show you how to do that too. But before I do that, I'm going to uh, tackle the easy ones first. So here you can see the fold is uh, in the white stripe and because the fold had the fishing line in it. Um, the tension wasn't perfect and there are some loose weft threads that I need to uh, massage in to make the correct tension. So if the th loop is large, and this one isn't too large, but if the loop is large uh, and it's on a end where we have started the row, then we can go to where the tail is tucked and we can untuck that tail by just pulling out the weft, weft thread and because we split the tail it's only one um, strand so you kind of have to be careful. Uh, go take it out from around the floating salvage. And then we'll go back to the fold and we'll just pull up the slack uh, along the entire length of the weft thread. And notice that I put my thumb or finger um, and hold the cloth down so that I'm not stretching the cloth and the warp threads right there where, where I'm tugging. So we'll just continue on across. And remember, I'm going the full or half the width of the blanket. So, and as I pull, I'm taking up some tension. I kind of tug and uh, in the crosswise direction so that 
it can kind of even out the, the tension along the thread. And then when we get to the end, because we split those plies, we need to uh, continue to split them and then take that one plied end and needle weave it back in the same shed. And I always lose my scissors in the folds of the blanket. So we'll trim those tails off and then uh, move on to the next one. So if the loop is small, um, you can spread that extra uh, loop along the weft uh, by just not pulling it tight, but just kind of pulling it up a little bit and um, moving down and pulling it up not quite as much. And then moving again, pulling it up not quite as much. And eventually uh, you'll get to a, a point in the weaving where Maybe the tension is a little bit tighter in one area. Um, so you'll be able to kind of massage that loop uh, into the rest of the uh, blanket. So we'll just kind of continue pulling that up a little bit at a time, tug on the crosswise grain and that will kind of spread that out and especially if it's a black thread that we're doing and we're getting to a uh, black on black square like right here uh, it's easier to hide that in there hide the little bit of looseness and the tension um, and you won't even really be able to see it um, see how it just disappeared there and then especially after we wash the blanket and uh, it kind of felt a little bit or not felt it folds um, you won't be able to see it at all so that's the easiest way to get rid of uh, those small little loops uh, if they come up uh, so there's another one and we'll just spread that across Now this one is an actual skip. And because it's in the middle of the um, blue section, uh, we need to needle weave an extra piece in to overlap that. So what I do is I back up from the loop um, about an inch, inch and a half or so, and I kind of tug on the thread so that I can see where it goes. And I will needle weave a uh, thread right on top of the thread that has the skip in it. And don't pull your tail all the way through there. And we'll get up here. Now you can see right there that the next stitch is where it only went under one instead of two. So I'm going to take and go under the two and then over two and then under those two and you can see that the next one is uh, where it starts behaving again. Oh, I lost my thread out of my needle. That's always annoying. I should have gotten a longer piece of thread. And I don't think I got, I think I went under three there. So when you're doing this, you really have to, especially with hand spun, because it might not be plied 
as tightly as commercial spun. So there you can see, I thought that that was two threads and it wasn't. So there, now it's correct. And you can usually tell that because um, you end up in the wrong shed and it doesn't, uh, doesn't, So now we are at the end of our skip, and I'll just tug on that thread so I make sure that I follow the correct one. And I'll go um, another inch or so. And just following that thread. And sometimes it's hard to see um, where you're supposed to be going. But, so that one isn't too bad. I'll just pull that tail so that it's at the end. I'll clip that off, clip the uh, skip thread out, and you can't even tell. Okay, so here is one that um, is close to the end, and it is the last thread before I tuck my tail. So on this one, it's really easy. We'll just pull that out back to where the skip is and then re-thread it on the needle. This is a little challenging because I have a two plies and I have uh, the one ply that I'm having to work with. So we'll just weave that in and you have to be careful just to go over under over under um, picking up two threads on each over and two threads on each under and then kind of making sure that I get both plies through my needle eye and I'm using a blunt tip uh, tapestry needle here so um, it makes it easier to not uh, go through different plies. And we'll pull that out. And then because uh, we are splitting the ply on the tail, I can just work with the one ply now. Um, I'm close enough to the end. And we'll go back through. Pull the tail back out. So it's it's not fast work. Unfortunately, doing finishing work on handwoven items sometimes takes as much time or more than the weaving. I've woven rugs where I spent more time finishing the ends of the rugs than I did on the weaving. So here we'll go under the floating selvage thread and then we'll come back around and I lost it again. So if your thread becomes too short, um, just go ahead and thread the needle through uh, picking up the threads that you want and then you can thread the, th the thread into the needle eye and um, pull it all through. So I'll go ahead and do that. Ugh. It's such a short tail. It's hard to kind of manage it, but that is the thing we have to do. Okay, so now that I've got my needle threaded through, I'll go a couple more stitches. And we can pull that tail all the way through and be, being careful not to um, shred the end. So now we can clip those ends off and it looks good as new. So here's another one um, where we needed to add 
a repair thread to uh, bridge that skip. So we'll go ahead and do that and weave it through. And then we'll clip our we'll clip our ends. Okay, so this one is a little more challenging. So this is one of the ones where I misthreaded my warp. So what I need to do, you can see here that the um, the twill is off. And so what I need to do is I need to pull out one of the threads and reinsert it. And I can see that the uh, left hand thread, your left, my right, uh, is in the correct position if it were moved one to the to your right so I'm just going to pull out the thread that is incorrect and move that uh, other thread over and we'll pull out the incorrect thread all the way down so this is a warp thread and we'll just pull it and I'm rolling it up and unrolling it. We'll go all the way down. I kind of tug on the end uh, so that I can see which thread I'm supposed to be removing. And I put pressure on the thread right before I pull it out. And then when we get down to the other end, I can just pull it out from the end. Okay, there we go. So there you can see that gap in there. Um, and I'm going to take that same thread because it's the right length. Uh, and I'll put it on my needle. And I'm going to push the other thread over where it belongs now. And take up that space. So you can see how the twill is already starting to look correct. And I'm going to secure my warp threads here with just a loose overhand knot so that my it protects my uh, weft that's there. I have uh, like four picks of weft scrap yarn in there that's black, but um, you can see it's getting kind of loose. So we'll go ahead and protect that. And then instead of starting at the bottom, I will start up here because it's easier for me to see the pattern. And I will go and needle thread um, towards the end. And with the black, it's, it's a lot harder to see. It's harder to see dark uh, colors so I usually do just uh, one stitch at a time and I have a white piece of cardboard underneath so that I can see it easier. So we'll just go ahead and continue weaving this in. So we'll just continue on to the end here and then we'll pull back enough to uh, tie into the end of the fringe and then we'll thread the needle on the other end and continue needle weaving this up through the rest of the warp and just kind of massaging the tension here and there moving that thread over so we'll pay particular attention to making sure that we get in the right sheds and continue the uh, twill pattern um, along the entire length. Push that over and you can see there under my fingers that I do have another skip there but I'll take care of that um, once I get this 
uh, thread finished up. There's a lot more skips to fix, <laughs> believe me. So here we are uh, down to the end. I didn't make you watch the entire length. Um, it's not too bad. It, it's pretty easy because the pattern is easy. Uh, so it's easy to keep track of it. Um, just making sure that you uh, catch the correct threads and keep that twill pattern going. So we'll take this out to the end and secure it in with the rest of the warp. So once I have most of the skips uh, that are readily apparent fixed, I lay the blanket out on the floor and I use my camera to find the stragglers. There is one right there. And I use the blue tape to mark them. <laughs> oh, there's my cat. I've got some ends I need to trim still, but those can happen after the wet finishing. So once I have found them all and fix them, um, I will work on the ends. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed watching me fix the errors in this video and found it helpful. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing and joining my channel. Uh, members who join get a few extra little perks so, and it helps me uh, continue providing good content. Um, you can also visit my Etsy store at etsy.com slash tangledwebsweaving. And if you find something that you would like to purchase on there, that also helps support the channel. So thanks for watching and happy weaving.